He hasn't made it difficult. We make it difficult. I'm trying to debunk everything that will keep you from worshiping the Lord. <laughs> Say, well, I'm not perfect. Quit yet on the end. He's in the process. If we're in the process, he's in the process. God even understands teenagers. And <laughs> my daughter will say that women. <laughs> he understands all of us. He's not having a problem. But we are who we are. He just has a problem with what his adversary is trying to do to us. And he's going to fight our battles. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord to be able to worship He's an awesome man. Good weather got in my way of getting to church on my time. It used to be if I wasn't here by 10 o'clock, I was late. As I passed somebody on the right coming down the same church around. <laughs> nature of humanity were centered on sin. It's contrary to us, but really we have to work at thinking about other people rather than what it has to do with us. But he's overcome that too. Because when we focus on him, and then we with the Lord focus on others. You know, the, the saying, you know, he's got our He's the one that takes care of every one of our needs. I know young people really, really are looking forward to growing up and living in their bodies. That'll change. If you tend to look at folks, you can find fault. It's pretty simple-minded to find fault. You don't have to be a giant intellect to find fault. But when we look through the eyes of Jesus, we can sure see different. doesn't mean we are people of reality, that we got different problems within this earth and within our own lives. And when we look through his eyes, we see hope, and also we see the love of God in people. We can't 
praise you, Jesus. Um, I thought we'd start with that song this morning because that's really where it all starts with him. You, know, you gotta surrender all. You know, Jesus won't strong on you. You know, he'll box you to a corner. <laughs> but he won't strong on you. You gotta surrender. And um, he's a gracious God. How do you found him to be wonderful? Even when we're not so wonderful, hope there's nobody here that thinks you're just wonderful all the time. <laughs> I know, you know the grandkids think grandpa's just wonderful all the time. <laughs> I know exactly right. But Jesus is wonderful all the time. <laughs> Worship him as we say, wonderful, wonderful Jesus is the <laughs>
even though his physical presence is not here, his spiritual presence is here, and we can experience him. But he did not leave us alone. He wants to be involved in our life, and that includes healing our body. That's right. It includes healing our body. It includes that no matter what trial we're in, he's going to be in the midst of it, and you can't lose. When the Lord's there, you can't lose. I know that we have been praying for Kitty. This is Brother Owen's sister-in-law. And, uh, and she experienced the leukemia. Now they have discovered uh, growths on her liver. And we want to uplift her. And we want to uplift her in prayer. We believe her. We're praying for a number of people in this situation. Associated with the church. Also associated with you. And that's associated with the church. You know somebody that's battling cancer, but you lift your hand. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The fear that associates, that's associated with cancer, we can't fully understand or respect that until you experience There is. My wife and I call it the black cloud. He was there all the time. Except when we turn to Jesus, and he took the black cloud away. Amen. He took the black cloud away before he took the cancer. Amen. So what we're doing is we're facing human situations before we're in heaven. God knows we're human beings, and he cares. Let me tell you something else about prayer. You'll know that you caught on to prayer. Prayer. When you pray and don't have a need. Because it says in there, and I've been under this, you know, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. And those kids have memorized it this year. Hey, when I get to it with the grandkids, I just walk it down and it and say, pray without ceasing. God, what do you mean, pray without ceasing? <laughs> think of that. What a heavy load. You think, he wants it. He, he wants a soul in tune with him. That we're interacting with him no matter what our circumstances are, where we're at. Not, and by the way, if somebody's going to hit you head out of the car, holler out Jesus. <laughs> right? I'm not telling you don't pray in the midst of me. I'm telling you, let's pray without ceasing. So if you would happen to be here today, life is treating you well. And we want you to pray. Because what prayer is, is communication with God. We, I live in a quiet house. My wife and I are quiet people. Now, you believe that about her, you probably don't believe that. But we really are. But it's, it is important that I listen to her and that she listens to me and that we communicate. Now, let, let, let's communicate with God and realize that he's not overwhelmed and he's interested in us we don't even have any anything to say that. thank you for being part of my sister Mary did you have a request? Well, my daughter Kelly um, she has a case that she has a birth yes we're going to pray for her we surely will pray for her amen 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 and so out of trust in Jesus and hope in him not telling you he's got to demonstrate something so that we'll trust him. But trust in him, trust in his work, which is it. We're going to pray this morning because he cares for us. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord, in a world that is confused, the world full of sickness, the world through a heartbreak, Lord Jesus, man against man. <clears throat> we thank you, Lord. You're not only the peace giver, Lord, but you're also the intervener, Lord. God, that you intervene in our life, Lord. And God, because you created us, you can perform anything, and it's not a miracle to you. It's miracles to us because we can't perform it, Lord. And God, we care, Lord Jesus. God, you in our heart, you have put a love for people in our hearts, Lord. This church, Lord Jesus. We love people as you know we do, Lord. And God, we're willing to carry with you their burdens, Lord Jesus. And we bring them to you, Lord Jesus. 
for you're sure a place of hope and great grace. You're the healer, Lord Jesus, and we trust you, Lord. You do not have to perform for us, for us to love you and trust you, Lord. You've been an awesome God, and we know you're going to be the same tomorrow and forever, Lord. God, we worship you because you've done mighty acts, but we worship you because of your presence, Lord, because you are our creator and our heavenly Father. God, take the, take the cloud of fear away, Lord. We're praying against fear, Lord Jesus. God, only you can do it, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We're praying against fear, Lord Jesus. And God, we're praying to you, Lord, who is the comforter, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your presence today. In your wonderful name we pray. In your wonderful name we pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you have been introduced to Holly and her mom, she be up before. Great grandma. <laughs> hey, that is great. My my granddaughter introduced me to them uh, this morning. She really did. Candace did. To make sure that I saw that, that, you know, be sure to introduce yourself to them. Now, every, don't, don't everybody move back. Holly might get a little bit concerned. <laughs> and a great grandma. Wow. That is one good looking great grandmother. <laughs> Pardon me, you know, a senior moment or something. <laughs> Greet one another. We're glad you're here. Amen. Greet one another. Hallelujah.
coming Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Special, I'm going to say special children's weekend because, you know, every day needs to be kids' day. If you've got to do it in your life. You know what, what I found? We have turned it into cynics. We, the tendency is Christian people shouldn't be. We turn into cynics because we know people, it's so easy for folks to say something. I'm setting you up. I'm warning you right now. Setting you up. So you need to be nervous. Grab on to your feet. <laughs> it's, it, it's easy to say stuff. Right? I love you. No, we need to say it. But we need to back it up with action. And if we say we love kids, we need to back it up with action. And your excuse for not being there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is an excuse. Because if you love it, now, <laughs> I'm trying to protect you, so you <laughs> See, I've been here around here so long, you know, since the beginning, what are you going to do, throw me out? <laughs> I got security. <laughs> now, I'm not trying to be obnoxious. I really not. But if you say you love kids and you don't show up Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday, we've been announcing kids, we've had it on the calendar since the beginning of the year. As soon as we got to the course. Not me. Okay? So I'm going to be here. <laughs> I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. Well, you're a kid at heart. You need to be. Because Jesus said you got to be like one to enter into the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of heaven. So, be here. Be here. Don't excuse it. Call up whoever you have appointments with and say, I can't make it. I love kids. But just give it to me. What are they going to say? Big jerk? Be here. Because how many kids here, if there's one coming, we're going to have it. We want as many as you can get in here. But that one child is worth children's weekend. And we need to not mouth it. We need to show up and be a part of it. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to receive your offer. Now, people that, the people who take money would never make that kind of announcement. They'd say, no, I want you to give. <laughs> You're going to have to overcome it. <laughs> Come on. Well, I don't want to get up here. What, de what depressed you? A grandpa saying he loves kids? The ushers are coming to get me out of this. These dignified people. Old Brother Allison, Brother Owen, who was agreeing with me, and I said, Lynn, you guys are the best looking guys in the church. You're part of my church. <laughs> I said, now Arthur in there, he looks good because he's young. Jesus, thank you for your presence. Yeah, 
yes, Jesus. We want to be yours so dear Lord. We want you to stay. Tell him so. Yes, Jesus. In your presence. Holy yeah, yeah. God, in these days we pray for you. We want to be in tune with you, Lord, and not in tune with this world. Oh, yes, Jesus. Thank you for the children, Lord. We're praying for the children. Even those that feel like they're grown up, we're praying for the children, Jesus. God, let them know that you're in tune with them. You're wonderful. You bless us all. Bless them.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. I worship you and I praise you, Lord. You're an awesome God and I love you today, Lord. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. You may be seated. Some of you may not know, but this church, by virtue of my ministerial affiliation, belongs to the United Pentecostal Church International. So we are not just ourselves, but rather there are in North America alone four th over 4,000 churches. And then when you spread throughout the world, many, many millions that believe in repentance, that believe in baptism in the wonderful saving name of Jesus Christ, that believe that God wants to live inside of them in His Spirit, and He has called us to live a holy life empowered by Him. And one day, the trumpet's going to sound... And we are going to go home to be with him. How many want to go to heaven? I want to go to heaven. Amen. Whether you're a little one or a big one, I want to go to heaven. And uh, this past weekend was uh, the North American section of the United Pentecostal Church is broken into districts. Our district happens to be the southern half of New Jersey and the state of Delaware. And we had our district conference this, uh, this past Thursday, Friday, and into Saturday and uh, so we're coming off of that, and um, I appreciated being able to spend some time with the North American Missions Director, Brother Carlton Kuhn, who's been here and preached for us, and uh, he was the national representative at the district conference. And uh, I did want to let you know, in keeping with what I have been really letting everybody know from the annual business meeting forward about intentionality and uh, causing some focus with the completion of one phase of my life with regard to preparation and moving into the doing phase, I have been weighing all aspects of my involvement and, and uh, looking to be very intentional and most effective. It is one thing to be a hamster in a wheel. You're moving, but you're not getting very far. I do not want to live the next 20 years as a hamster with a lot of motion, but no movement. Everybody got my picture? And so I've been under the, uh, these last few months, and, and it will continue. There's a few more pieces to be assessed and, and analyzed and looked at, and I just wanted to let you know that one of the decisions that I had made was that I had done what I should do what I could do, and it was time for me not to allow my name to stand for the North American Missions Director of our district. And so I did that at the district conference, and so we do have a new director, a uh, young man that has returned to the district, actually taken Brother Stump's church, those of you that know the Pleasantville Church, Wayne Gillis, his son-in-law, has taken that. He is now our new North American Missions Director. And, uh, and so we will continue to do what we have always wanted to do, and we'll continue to Endeavor, which is to plant churches. We're going to Philadelphia. That's where we're headed. All right? So I wanted to let everybody know about that and uh, let you know that. And so hopefully pray for Brother Gillis that the Lord will empower him to lead the district. And, uh, but I felt that it was time that I would be most effective by putting my efforts back into singular focus here. And uh, so I wanted to let you know about that. Second thing I wanted to mention to you also is tonight is the final uh, lesson on the Daniel series. And speaking of being in church, you need to be here. You don't want to miss it. You absolutely do not want to miss it. Uh, yesterday, my wife spoke at a ladies' luncheon in, uh, for a church in Metuchen. Those of you that remember the Neviuses from back when we were one singular, single district, all of New Jersey and Delaware. And she spoke at the ladies' luncheon, and she uh, told me afterwards what she spoke on. She said it was a quite simple thought, and I didn't, I didn't tell you this when you said it, but I just smiled to myself and went, yeah, but it's groundbreaking. She said, I'd like to share with you a recipe, which I guess comes with the women's domain. At least in my world, recipes go with the women's domain. Arthur knows about recipes. He's a better man than I am. He knows how to cook. 
Brother Owen knows about recipes. He's a better man than I am. He knows how to cook. I'm one of them old Neanderthal men. I know how to go out and get the, get the carcass and drag it in, but I don't know what to do with it after that. So uh, <clears throat> I bring home the bacon, but Reg definitely is the one that uses the recipe to fry it up and figure out what we're going to do with it. Well, anyway, she said, I, I'd like to share with you a recipe, uh, and I, if I get the title wrong, Reg, you can correct me, a recipe for a successful life. A blessed life. Thank you. I knew I was going to I was going to miss it. A blessed life. Um, very simple recipe. You know, some recipes can be quite complicated. You know, so many this, so many of that, and all kinds of ingredients and careful preparations and all of this. Well, the, the recipe was actually quite simple. I had three very simple points. Uh, number one is make the Word of God the foundation of your life. That's where truth comes from. When it comes to making decisions about life, you abide not by your feelings. You abide not by your experiences. You, you abide by the Word of God. You obey the Word of God. So recipe, uh, part one of the recipe was to make the Word of God the foundation of your life. Uh, part number two, I think it was, uh, did you go to finance a second? She didn't even remember. Doesn't matter. This recipe is easy enough. You can put in the other, either one just as long as you got all three. Second one is, is include God in your finances. Include God in your finances. Anybody have a guess on what the third one was? Say it louder, Brother Kim. That's right. Don't cut church. Come to church. Um, I've had an interesting experience within the United Pentecostal Church. There are times that people actually think, because there's, there's times that I take certain actions or I, I say certain things and, and people get a little miffed. They get a, they get a little upset. I, I, I speak a little too intense or I... I, uh, you know, and, and, and they, and they go to my father and they ask him to speak to me, to kind of like rope me in, to kind of speak wisdom to your son as if he doesn't already know exactly what I just did and had already been counseled with. About the action I took. It cracks me up. We are like joined at the hip. Yes we are two individuals. But we are in sync. On what we are doing. And it cracks me up. Well ladies and gentlemen. This morning before I preach. If you expected me to get up here. And be nervous. Because you all got a little bit of an attitude. Or whoever did. About him telling you that you need to be here Friday night at 7.30. Saturday night at 6 o'clock. Not one or the other, both. Sunday morning at 10.30 and Sunday night at 6 o'clock. You are as confused as they are. You need to be here Friday night at 7.30. Saturday night at 6 o'clock. Sunday morning at 10.30 and Sunday night at 6 o'clock. We are going to have a great time in Children's Weekend. You need to be here and you need to bring your kids with you. Period. Because the old man ain't lost it and he's not up here and I'm not going to rope him in. Everybody smile at me. How you doing, Sister Dottie? Good to see you here today. Tell you what. If you can't come both of those services, I'm going to understand that. The rest of you, I don't know what your problem is. You go break two hips, end up with diabetes disease in your legs, and twist both of the ligaments of your ankles, and then I'll think about maybe you don't need to be here. Everybody say amen. amen. Don't fib now. Yeah, I know. I know. By the way, one final thing. Say, preacher, man, you're never going to get the sermon out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scripture says that part of the calling to preach is the ability to preach in season and out of season. In season, it's easy to do. Out of season, it's a little harder to do. Now, I hope for Holly and her grandmother's sake that uh, <clears throat> it's in season this morning, but I do know how to preach out of season. Because I'm here this morning to tell somebody that you can have the Holy Ghost today. Now, ask yourself this question. Why would I want the Holy Ghost? Let me first, before I even read my text, explain to you what the Holy Ghost is. 
The Holy Ghost is God. That's, that's all it is. It's, it, it's nothing more, nothing less. It is God Himself. And so the reality is you need to ask yourself this question. How would my life be worse if God were in it? Now, if you can come up with an answer to that, then maybe you don't want the Holy Ghost. But I can't figure out how life could be worse if God were present. And I can really see how life might possibly, probably, get at least marginally, incrementally better if he were present. Now, one of the presence, one of the, the premises of this is that we say, well, God's everywhere. Yes. But the infilling of the Holy Ghost is God moving from the outside to the inside. And if God is everywhere and God can do great things being with you, I promise you this morning your life can be transformed if God is living in you. Where is your sin problem? Oh, let me stop for a moment. Everybody here that does not feel they are a sinner, please stand. All right, I'm going to take that, that everybody here, and we're not pointing fingers, we're not looking down our noses. Everybody here, oh, I'm sorry. Ah, there we go. Everybody here, including the two ladies that are walking in, I'm going to wait a second for them to find their seat, because I know that they consider themselves sinners too. Right, Sister Nancy? I know that. Sister Marjorie, you consider yourself a sinner? All right, good. All right, we're all in agreement. Oh, Marjorie upstairs, you better squat. We are all sinners. Now, the fact that we are sinners is not, without Jesus, that's depressing. But with Jesus, this is a good place to be. Because can I tell you who Jesus is? He's the Savior of sinners. The only thing that will cause you to be stuck in your sin is if you insist on saying, I'm not a sinner. Jesus said it this way. He said, I've come to seek and to save that which is lost. He says, I am a physician. Come to heal the sick. The only problem is, is if you aren't sick, then I can't heal you. So if you are willing this morning to admit that you are a sinner, you are someone who has not been obedient to everything God designs you to be. If you have not been obedient to every one of his commands, I've got good news for you today. Jesus is here to save you. Where is your sin? Is it in a jar that sits on a shelf at home and you have to stop by and pick it up? Is it located at a specific geographical location that you have to go and visit like Dairy Queen in order to get it? I don't know about you, but I have found that my sin is in me. I don't have to go looking for sin. Sin is in me. Can I get at least a couple people wave at me and say, yeah, I'm with you, preacher, on that one? It's in me. Nobody has to tempt me. I tempt myself. I come up with wrong things to do on my own. I can be totally alone and come up with things to do wrong. Somebody... You hear me? I mean, it, 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 it just comes. Now, if you're sitting there going, man, what kind of preacher are you? I'm an honest preacher. That's what kind of preacher I am. I'm a preacher that lives a life just like you do. I have not yet attained. I have not yet succeeded. I have not yet arrived. Oh, no. Sin is in me. So when I say to you that you want the Holy Ghost because you want God to move from being with you to being in you, please understand. The reason is, is because where is your sin? Your sin is in you. 
It's in you. It goes with you everywhere you go. That's why you find the trouble you find. That's why you make the choices that you make. That's why you do the things that you do and that I do. Because sin is present with us. The Apostle Paul put it this way in Romans. He says, every time I go to do good, sin is present with me. So the good news today about the Holy Ghost and by the way, yes, we are a Pentecostal church. If that, if that somehow escaped your attention, I need the, 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 the honesty and advertising. We are not a Presbyterian church. Sister Dottie, I know we didn't tell you that right away, but we are not. You know that now, don't you? Sharon, you know we're a Pentecostal church. All right, good. Uh, we were a little dishonest with Sister Dottie. She came in the front door and said that she was so excited to be going to a Presbyterian church. And we waited a few weeks before we told her. It was a while ago, but we did. We, 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 it, you should have had the first hint. I had a Presbyterian pastor one time tell me, and he said it with a smile. So I'm assuming that they, he said, we are the frozen chosen. Now, I, now I wouldn't say that we, we, you know, but we ain't frozen. That, that's, that's, not, that's not the way this church operates. So that was your first clue. The second clue was when you were sitting on the front pew and God filled you with the Holy Ghost. We're a Pentecostal church. We believe that God empowers our salvation, not by sending somebody else, but by coming himself. He did it when he came in the incarnation and died on the cross, and he's doing it now through his spirit. He wants to get in the middle of your mess. He wants to live inside of the middle of your mess. He's come into the middle of my mess, and boy, he's doing a good job. We still got a long way to go. But boy, it's a lot better than it was. It's kind of like my house. Boy, we're working on it. These past few years of writing and stuff, I, I just haven't ridden herd, and I got pigs in my house. Did you know that? I have pigs in my house. I do. They're rather cute pigs. They're not like them ugly pigs from Angry Birds, that, that app. But, but they, and they don't just sit around and go like that. But I got pigs in my house. There are five of them. I do. I have five pigs, three boys and two girls. The funny part is, is the worst pigs are the girls. I'm not saying the boys aren't pigs too, but the girls are absolutely atrociously piggy. Uh, Holly, are you a piggy? Are you neat and orderly? Can you come to my house and maybe influence my girls to kind of clean up their rooms, not leave their, oh, they leave so much stuff around, it's not even funny. Cassandra has to have a bit. Yes. Well, that would mean why she is. Oh, God have mercy. See, I'm a neat, I'm a neat freak too. And What's funny is Cassandra loves to clean, but she doesn't want to pick up. She just wants to clean. How do you clean when you got junk all over the floor? So I got pigs in my house. So I'm kind of on this rampage. And, you know, I, I, my, my kids are understanding. They understand, I have a good relationship with my kids, but I'll, I'll walk in the room, and there it goes. Man, pencils are all over the floor. And so last night, 11 o'clock, I walk in their room, and I'm, I'm getting my suit out and stuff. And I look around, and I'm like, pigs! So Vincent decides to get up. I got a point. Stay with me for a second. Vincent gets up, and he begins to rearrange the clutter on the floor. No, Vincent, that feather does not stay on the floor. It finds a drawer. No, Vincent, that book does not stay under the bed. It goes someplace else. You're piggy. Cut it out. Who didn't hang up the towels in the bathroom? What is wrong with you piglets? You want to know what the Holy Ghost does? The Holy Ghost comes into your piggy life. Remember, everybody agreed they were sinners, right? Everybody agree you're sinners? Everybody agree you got mud in your life? Everybody agree you got problems? Everybody agree that you go around and you try to do good and you find yourself doing wrong instead? The Holy Ghost shows up 
comes into your life and starts, he's better than me. He don't go around calling you pigs. He just starts going around. He goes, you want to pick that up? You didn't even see it. That's the amazing thing about these little piglets. They don't even see it. They like, the first time I pointed out, they look at me like, I, I, what are you talking about, Dad? The room's a mess. What do you mean? What, looks good to me. What, what's the problem? And that's our biggest problem, dear sinner. We don't even see what's wrong with our lives. We don't even see the problems that exist. We don't even realize what kind of mess we're living in. We don't even realize what we're laboring under. We don't even realize how burdened we are. And so the Holy Ghost comes in as opposed to being with you. He's in you. He's in your house. Because the problem's in your house. The problem's not on the outside. The problem is not our world. You can handle that world. The problem is in your house. And he comes inside of that heart. He comes inside of that soul and that spirit. And he starts walking around. And he starts loving you. And he has dinner with you. And he has lunch with you. He sleeps with you. He gets up in the morning with you. He goes to bed with you at night. He's there all the time. And he's talking. Can I get witness from some spirit-filled people? He's talking. By the way, some of you need to learn to listen a little better to him. But he's talking. He just keeps talking. And he doesn't always say things are wrong. Sometimes he says, I love you. Sometimes you're hurting and he says, it's going to be okay. He's the comforter. He's the advocate. Sometimes you've done something wrong and you're beating yourself up. And he comes along and says, it's going to be okay. But other times he shows up and he goes... That's a real mess. I don't want to think about that. That's a real mess. Oh, come on. I, I don't want to deal with that. That's a real mess. Well, what do I do about it? Oh, glad you asked. You ever? Come on. Some of you are filled with the Spirit. You know what I'm talking about. He starts giving you line items to do. Start with this. Do this. Do this. He, he doesn't tell you the whole thing. He just tells you first step. Just, just one step. And the cool part about it. Now my kids can bear testimony to this. But in this rampage I have about cleaning up the house. It is not that I sit in my lazy boy. And I prop my feet up and I say. Alright you go do this. And you go do that. And you go do this. And you go do that. No. I tell them things they can do. And meanwhile I do things they can't do. And that's the Holy Ghost. Because ladies and gentlemen, I got sin in my life. And that sin within my life, there are things I can't fix. There are problems that have been put down to me from the previous generations. There are problems that exist in this world. I can't fix those problems. But I can take those steps that the Holy Spirit directs me to. And then He does what only He can do. Can I get an Amen. So this morning, you want the Holy Ghost. Now, here's the good news, and I'm almost done. Can you believe it? And y'all didn't sit on me too bad. Say, preacher, if you start that again, we are. Don't dare me. I know how to preach out of season. I'll show you that I know how to preach out of season. Me and God's a majority. Somebody needs to hear me right now. Me and God's a majority. Where two or three are gathered in his name, there he shall be in the midst of them. And when two or three ask anything in his name, there it shall happen. You remember the last time this congregation got ticked at me about something I preached? God filled my son with the Holy Ghost. How about, I almost want you to get ticked this morning. Come on, Jesus. I need somebody filled with the Holy Ghost this morning. I need you to answer back to this congregation that they need to be here Friday night at 7.30, Saturday night at 6 o'clock, Sunday morning at 10.30, Sunday night at 6 p.m. Say, boy, you better hope God covers your tail. Oh, that's all right. Remember, I preached about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If he takes me out of the fiery furnace, it's okay. But if he doesn't, I still don't bend and I still don't bow. You want the Holy Ghost. Why do you want the Holy Ghost? Because it's a Pentecostal church. you got to get the Holy Ghost. No! Because that's your doctrine, and that's what... No! You want the Holy Ghost because God promised it to you. You can have it. Jesus said this in John chapter 7, on the last day, the climax of the festival. Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. 
For the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. And then the writer of the gospel tells us what he meant. When he said living water, he was speaking of the spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. Really? You mean that's just not a gift that some people get? No, no, no. Everyone who believes in him. You don't believe, you can't be saved. But if you believe today, the Holy Spirit is a gift that God wants to give to everyone who believes in him. But the Spirit, now here, can you imagine listening to this? At the time when Jesus was talking about it, you couldn't get it. Jesus was telling you about something that you couldn't get. The most horrible things that I ever have experience for is to watch a presentation. It typically is from my favorite company, Apple. And they show me what I can get. And then tell me I can't get it yet. Oh, it's, it's, it's infuriating. All the options, all the things, all the innovate, all this great whatever it is. Pre-order. Oh, goodness. Pre-orders drive me up a wall. Pre-order. That means you take my money and I don't even have anything yet. I'm here today to tell you that you have a privileged position today. Because at the time Jesus said these words, you couldn't get the Holy Ghost yet. Because the scriptures say because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. He hadn't yet died. He hadn't yet rose from the dead. And he had not yet been glorified into that new body. I got a message for you this morning. You ready? He has entered into his glory. You can have the Holy Ghost Today, you don't have to wait till tomorrow. You don't have to wait till next week. You don't have to place a down payment. You don't have to do a pre-order. You can have it right here, right now, today. Because he's entered into his glory. And you want the Holy Ghost. You want the Holy Ghost. Everybody agrees we're sinners. We're piggies. We got a mess in our lives. But if you will open your heart and your hands and your mouth to the Lord Jesus Christ today, He will fill you with His Spirit and He'll come into your life. Not just be with you, but be in you. And you'll find that life's going to start cleaning up. The floors are going to start shining. You're going to start finding yourself every once in a while not sinning when you were tempted to. Oh, isn't that awesome? Come on, church. Some of you remember what that's like. Used to be things you were going to do, and no matter how hard you tried not to, you did them, but you don't do that anymore. Because the Holy Ghost, everyone who believes. So the simple question this morning is, do you believe? Because if you believe, God has His Spirit for you. Now, I'm not going to embarrass uh, Sharon Actually, there's two Sharons, but I'm, I'm speaking of Holly Sharon. Um, I'm not going to embarrass her, but uh, I'm going to use you as one end of the spectrum. I'm going to use Holly as the other. Now, I agree with my dad. You're, you're, you're an awful young-looking great-grandmother. But if you're Holly, you can get the Holy Ghost today. Holly can come up here and say, Jesus, I want your spirit, and God will give it to her. How old are you, Holly? Five years old. You can have it. I've heard of a three-year-old getting it. Now, that's not typical, but I definitely have heard of four-year-olds. I got it at six, so does she. You can have the Holy Ghost today, Holly. But you know what? Sharon can have the Holy Ghost today, too. Her great-grandmother can have the Holy Ghost today. It's not about your age. It's not about your gender. It's not about how rich you are or how poor you are. You don't have to pay for it. You have to believe. And if you believe that God doesn't just want to be with you, but wants to be in you to help you clean your life up and to be the savior of a sinner, you can have the Holy Ghost today. Well, what do I do? Let me tell you very simply. First thing you need to do is repent. You need to tell God that you've sinned. But repentance is not just telling God that you've sinned. That's kind of like saying the obvious. It's like the kid with the cookie crumbs around his mouth telling his mama that he had a cookie. Obviously, his mama already knew he had a cookie. God already knows that you're a sinner. The important part is the second part of repentance. Repentance is not just saying, God, I've sinned. But it's God, I want to be changed. 
That's crucial to repentance. Repentance is not just saying, God, I sinned and, and, I, and I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to be grounded. I don't want to be spanked. I don't want to be put in my room. I don't want my toys taken away. It is, God, I am sorry, but God, please change me. You need to repent of your sin. So I would encourage you that you start with that. Whether you pray in this altar or you stay in your pew, it doesn't matter. This whole place is a house of prayer. And church, let's make it a house of prayer. But repent. When you have finished repenting, you say, well, how long do I got to do it? This is not a contest. This is an honest statement. If you honestly are being, if you're being honest before God, I don't know that you need to spend more than 30 seconds on it. God, I am a sinner. God, I am sorry. And God, I want to be changed. And when that honest, effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, it will avail. God will hear you. Then what you need to do is you need to, are you ready? You need to, to your comfort level, surrender. Now, let me tell you how I have to surrender, because I'm kind of a bully. My surrender is loud, and my surrender is prominent. Yours might not be so prominent. It might just be this. But you need to, with your body, maybe it's that you're going to kneel. But you find a way with your body to signal to God, I surrender. I give you the control. Once you've repented, pick your head up. Don't have your head down. Pick your head up. See, why do I need to have my head up? Because our body posture signals things to us. Not just to God, but it signals things to us. And when we got our heads down... If you see me walking around like this, you know one of two things, right? Either I got a crick in my neck or I'm depressed. I'm sad and I'm depressed. Okay, so pick your head up and talk to God out loud. You say, why do I got to talk out loud? Because if you don't talk out loud to God, by the way, you don't have to talk as loud as me. You don't need to have a microphone in front of you. You just need to talk out loud to God. Because the scripture tells us that the flowing of living water out of our heart is in fact the tongues. God takes over our tongues and our lips and he speaks through us in a language that lets us know he's moved from the outside to the inside. So all you need to do is talk out loud. Do you need to talk real loud? No. But you need to talk out loud. You need to talk to Jesus. What do I say to him? I would make a couple of suggestions. Number one, thank him. You've just asked him to forgive you of your sins. You've just asked him to change you. So thank him for doing that. Thank him for receiving you. Second thing you can do is praise him. What is praise? Praise is an outward. Worship is our inward posture. Praise is our outward expression saying to God how great you are. So, for instance, if I got up here and I played the violin, that would be a miracle. But anyway, if I got up here and I played the violin and I got done and I did really well and everybody clapped, that's a form of praise. In another venue that might be a little more, you know, if I got up and, and I did a stand-up comedy routine, I do that every once in a while, but only under the inspiration. And it rarely comes, but anyway. And, and, and so I get up here, and, and, and you might like what I did, and so you might clap, or, or, or you, might, you might holler, or you might whistle. You might stand to your feet. You might, you, there's, there's, some, there's some ways that you verbalize it. Hey, I'm crazy enough to think that if you want to let God know how happy you are by whistling at him, that he'll go ahead and take that. I know some of you are sitting here going, man, preacher, you are off the hinge today. That's all right. You need to verbalize to him not only your thanksgiving, but how great he is. Say, but I'm a quiet person. Let me explain something about quiet people. No matter how quiet you are, you do talk. You know how I know that you talk? Let me tell you how I know that you talk. If you get a telephone bill that charges you $500, I promise you, you don't pay it. What do you do? You pick up your telephone, you call the telephone company, and you might whisper, you might yell, but you open your mouth and you say, we got a problem. So all of you quiet folks, 
Speak however you would speak whenever you got that $500 bill. I don't need you to yell. I don't need to hear you. But you need to talk to God. You need to just verbally talk to God. Say, well, I'm, I'm nervous about what people are going to think. Trust me. Nobody's wanting to mess with the preacher today, okay? Because everybody knows I'm loaded for bear. So nobody's going to be looking at you and nobody's going to be listening to you, all right? Because if I see somebody looking around, if I see somebody listening, they're going to get a tap on the shoulder. So nobody's going to do that today. So you've got an optimal environment that you can, by your body, let God know that you surrendered. And then with your mouth, you're going to thank Him and you're going to praise Him. Some of the things that I say is, Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. You are awesome. Use your language. Maybe you don't use the word awesome. Maybe you use the word great. God, you are great. God, I love you. God, I thank you for caring for me. Now, let me tell you what's going to happen. I promise you this. If you will repent of your sins, as I described, if you will by your body some way signal to him that you have surrendered, and you will out loud begin to speak to him, let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to start feeling God. There's a couple things that might happen. This is just by experience. I'm not telling you that it's going to happen to you, but this is by experience. Your hand might start shaking. Your leg might start shaking. You might feel little tingles go up and down your spine. You might feel all warm and flushed like somebody just complimented you and, you, and you're a little embarrassed. Your tongue and your lips might get a little thick like, like, well, some of you remember, like you'd had too much to drink. What's happening? God's responding. God's coming. He's moving from outside to inside. And as he moves from outside to inside, you are going to face a critical moment in that whole process. If you've done everything that I just said there, you're going to face a critical moment. Because at that moment, you're going to think to yourself, have I lost my marbles? Am I making this up? Is somebody else producing this? This is scary. I'm feeling like I'm out of control. And at that key point, I'm telling you ahead of time, because when it happens, I want my voice to come into your head. I want you to hear that and go, okay, the preacher told me this was going to happen. You face a choice. At that key point, you face a single choice. And the choice is, is to say to God, God, I believe this is you and I trust you. The other choice is to say, God, this is freaking me out. And you'll change your body posture. You'll stop talking out loud. You'll clamp your lips shut. You'll shut it down. Now, if you do that this morning, please understand, we still love you, and God can still fill you with the Holy Ghost. But he can't fill you with the Holy Ghost if you shut your mouth and if you shut down the submission posture to him. So I suggest highly that you make the choice and say, okay, God, this is crazy. This is like me taking a flying leap off the end of a deep pool. I hope you got a life raft out there, Lord, because this is crazy. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trust you. And you keep praising him. And when you do, what's going to happen is, is you are going to hear language come out of your mouth that you don't understand. And when it does, don't be freaked because I'm telling you it's going to happen. I'm telling you by the Bible that it's going to happen. It's described within Scripture. Go read Acts chapter 2. Go read Acts chapter 19. Go read Acts chapter 10. You're going to hear language that's come from the Heavenly Father into you. You're going to hear that language. And that is the irrefutable proof of Him to you that He's moved from the outside to the inside. Now, God's ready to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. Church, from the front to the back, from the right to the left, this is a house of prayer. Make it that. Where you're at in this altar, if you want to move to another spot, for some reason today that whole section over there is empty on this great praying spot right over here on my left. See that? Nobody's sitting there. I don't know where they all are. Don't worry about it. Great praying spot right there. So we got an altar up here that nobody is. But if you don't want anybody to see you, just slip out of your pew and slide over here to one of these side pews right there. Bury your nose down in that pew. Get yourself in a place of posture of surrender after you've repented. Lift your hands, lift your... Somehow, let him know that you surrendered. And then begin to thank him and praise him. And when he begins to touch you, don't shut down. Just keep loving him. This altar is open. Would you come and pray?
Would you find a place to pray? From the front to the back. Church, do not mess this morning. God has an appointment with somebody to fill them with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Remember, it doesn't matter how old you are. doesn't matter how young you are. Jesus, I worship you, Lord. God, I magnify your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Those of you that aren't miffed with me, be active in the Spirit and praying with people. Those of you that are miffed, stay in your pews. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you and we praise you, Lord. God, I worship you and I magnify you, Lord. You are awesome, Jesus. You are awesome, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I worship you and I praise you. God, I magnify you and I glorify your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you're an awesome God. Mm, you're an awesome God, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus, you're awesome, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't skip the repentance now. Repentance is important, but don't stay there too long, because then that means you're not believing. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus, you're awesome, Lord. Did they leave? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. God, I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. you and I praise you Lord that's it church hallelujah hallelujah turn this place into a house of prayer hallelujah 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 Jesus hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus hallelujah 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 Jesus I worship you Lord Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus, I worship you, Lord. Yes, I praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, I worship you and I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, touch my brother. Jesus, praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Won't hurt you to pray through anyway today, would it? Jesus, in your name, God, touch Jordan in his body, Lord. God, he needs healing in his body. Touch him now in Jesus' name. Touch him now in his body, in Jesus' name. God, give him healing virtue now, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I want to get the boys baptized this morning. Okay, this All morning? Right. Yes, sir. All right. Let me get, let me get Ben and he'll get you set up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, these two guys, get them ready, we get baptized. All right, one got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I know. Hallelujah, come on. If one person can do it, then two people can do it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. By the way, two are getting baptized, too. I will, I will. Jesus. 
Hallelujah. That's it, church. Come on, a house of prayer. Hallelujah. House of prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's it, Brother Herman. Just let him take over. Give him voice. There we are. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. It's probably two. I don't say it till they confirm it, but it's probably two that just got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Herman and I met in my office, and we've been agreeing in prayer, asking God to fill him with the Holy Ghost. By faith, I told him within four weeks, God was going to answer him. I think this is the fourth week, and God just filled him with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 These two boys I'm getting ready to baptize have already received the Holy Ghost at their grandma's. Now we're going to bury them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
Sure. Now, church, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be rough on you, but I'm going to ask you a very simple question. And to everybody that it applies to, apply it. And if it don't, don't worry about it. If God can do that out of season, what if we all showed up and got in season? wonder what will happen Friday night if we all showed up. You went home and changed every one of your plans, and you showed up on Friday night. I wonder whose kid could get the Holy Ghost. I wonder if you show up on Saturday night, whose kid can get the Holy Ghost. Come on, I'm challenging you. God answered you. I, yeah, I had my neck out there. Hey. Stuck, preacher stuck his neck out on the line and God answered you back. Two filled with the Holy Ghost. Two baptized in Jesus' name. Come on now. Hallelujah. 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 God answered Brother Herman's prayer. He'd been asking for the Holy Ghost for weeks. God answered it. Sister Mary just followed what I told her to do. God filled her with the Holy Ghost. Can you give him praise? And whatever attitude you got to get rid of, get rid of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Don't skip tonight.